Memorial Day historically marks the unofficial start to summer, and in New England, the start of boating season. This year was no different. Boats of all shapes and sizes have been popping up in local bays and harbors as the weather and water warms. Aside from a brush with Tropical Storm Irene last summer and a handful of mediocre coastal storms this winter, conditions have been largely calm as of late, making the water that much more alluring to mariners. But the calm can be deceiving. In just a matter of minutes, weather conditions can change rapidly and threaten those on the water. Being prepared for such changes is critical and was part of the focus of last week's National Safe Boating Week. Officials from communities nationwide, including Hingham, preach messages of preparedness and understanding as boaters get underway for the season. National Safe Boating Week, which was a joint effort by the National Safe Boating Council and the National Weather Service, kicked off with a discussion of hypothermia. And while hypothermia might seem irrelevant to summer seafaring folk, it certainly isn't. Especially here in the higher latitudes, where sea surface temperatures take all summer to really warm up. The council points out that the human body cannot survive in water temperatures that are in the 50s and 60s for very long. Part of the reason for this is because the body in water conducts heat away at a rate 26 times faster than in air of the same temperature. Keep in mind that water temperatures around New England are in the 50s, and waters often only warm into the 60s during June. Peak temperatures are not often reached until Labor Day. In such cold water, extremities can become numb, weakening the ability of muscles to work efficiently. Knowing that, most avoid staying in the water for too long, aside from a quick dip on a hot day. But consider what would happen in the event of a boating accident. Mariners may find themselves in chilly waters for several minutes, or even hours, depending on how long it takes for help to arrive. Because of that, officials urge boaters heading out on journeys well away from land to be armed with survival gear, and every boater is required to have life jackets. According to data from the U.S. Coast Guard, 85% of people who drowned while boating were not wearing a life jacket. Boaters are required to have a U.S. Coast Guard-approved life jacket on board for every passenger on their vessel. That was a message reinforced at Hingham's recent Touch a Boat event, at which local harbor masters and Coast Guard officials reviewed life jackets and provided relevant safety tips to boaters. Having the proper safety gear on board is critical at any time of the year, but especially during the summer months when ocean conditions can change rapidly. I recently sat down with Hingham's Deputy Harbor Master, Mark Brennan, to discuss some of the biggest weather impacts to local mariners. Without question, thunderstorms pose a major threat to mariners. Storms can rapidly bring 30 to 50 knot winds, lightning, and low visibility due to hail and heavy rain. While lightning is an obvious hazard, especially to sailboats which are struck regularly, Brennan says mariners often panic before the onset of storms, leading to gridlock and a new hazard in addition to those presented by weather conditions. People get nervous when the weather fronts roll in and they start breaking off the moorings and uh, they leave the mooring field and typically head inbound to go back to port. So instead of just staying where they are, now they're actually running into the weather. So thunderstorms create that problem for us uh, because you get a lot of people out there, they're racing to get back, uh, they're not paying attention to navigation, they're rushing through areas they typically shouldn't rush through, and then you get a high traffic flow because everybody tries to leave. Fortunately, it is becoming even easier for boaters to keep tabs on potential inclement weather. For starters, long-range forecasts have improved significantly, giving mariners several days' notice when potential storms threaten. Things like small craft advisories and gale or storm warnings can give mariners advance warning on hazards such as wind and wave conditions up to 24 hours before the threat begins. Special marine warnings warn of sudden increases in wind to over 35 knots or 40 miles per hour. And when out on the water, the advent of smartphone apps is supplementing more traditional means of spreading that warning information. In the advent of uh, smartphones, it's changed a lot. Uh, my phone goes off with an alert, tells me that a thunderstorm's coming. Years ago, we just relied on you know, knowing the wind's changing, you'd feel that sudden calm, you know, you get the green sky, you start to know, okay, this is not going to be a good day. Um, so I think the technology has helped us tremendously. Uh, the other thing is on uh, most mariners, if they're underway, the boat's moving, they've got the VHF radio on. The Coast Guard is very good about coming on Channel 16 and making broadcasts about upcoming weather events. 
uh, if a thunderstorm is definitely going to pose a threat to a specific area. But some on the water may not have access to Coast Guard warnings. Kayakers, for example, are often left to simply read the sky for signs of trouble. They be impacted more by the weather and require our services more than some of the boaters do. Um, because the kayakers don't typically, a lot of them are rental kayakers, they go in and rent them, they go out for a nice paddle day, they don't have a VHF radio aboard, um, they're not really paying attention to the weather, they're just out on a beautiful sunny day and you and I both know how quickly that changes. So there's been a number of times over the years we've gone out to bring a kayaker back in. Uh, it's very difficult to paddle a kayak in 50 knot winds uh, and never mind the lightning coming all around you. So. Uh, it is stressful for them especially. But we try to post uh, at our master shed down there at the harbor, uh, right by Stars, we try to get people to leave float plans with us. And the float plan would say, okay, I'm in an orange kayak uh, with two other people, we're in a blue kayak and a yellow kayak, and we're gonna paddle out to Bunkin Island. We're gonna go out and we expect to be back around two or three o'clock in the afternoon. So we know who's out there most times and then when the storm passes through, we'll go out after the storm passes through and just kind of check to make sure everything's okay and see where people are. And while the hazards of thunderstorms are clear to boaters, some other weather phenomenon may go unnoticed until it's too late. Fog, for example, can be especially dangerous to the boating community. See, uh, fog is the big issue. Uh, fog is really difficult because it's not as predictable as a thunderstorm. Um, we don't always get the warnings when fog's going to roll in and roll out, especially down you know, along Hull and the, the outside of Hingham there where we, you know, the wind changes in the middle of the day and you get a fog bank roll in. Uh, it's very difficult to navigate through. Fog has proven to be troublesome in the past. In the summer of 2007, the Laura and the Massachusetts, two commuter boats collided near the Long Island Bridge one Tuesday morning shrouded in fog. While the damage to the vessels was not serious, it was still jarring for more than 150 commuters on board. To avoid collisions like that, Brennan suggests mariners get used to using their electronic guidance in fair weather, so they're familiar with how it works during poor conditions. On a sunny day, turn your electronics on so that you learn to develop the skills and the trust in what your equipment is actually doing. And What you see on a sunny day is the same thing you're going to see on that radar on a foggy day, but your brain is going to train itself to understand what it is you're looking at. In addition, the deputy harbor master says there are other ways mariners can be preparing for adverse weather that arrives while on the water. As mariners, again, make sure your electronics, your navigation equipment is working. Make sure your bilge pumps are working. Um, understand and, and make sure that your boat's in good working condition, that there's no scupper issues where the scuppers won't let the water out of the hull. Um, lots of little things like that that as mariners they can take place. The other thing is the VHF radios. Most people have VHF radios on their boat, but they never turn them on. So to listen to VHF radio, you should monitor channel 16. If the Coast Guard understands or they know there's a weather event that's going to be pressing down on a given area, they'll do an emergency broadcast for that specific area and give mariners enough time to react to it. Preparation is key because a threat that weather poses to mariners is real. In 2010, the U.S. Coast Guard reported that 672 people died in boating accidents nationwide. Weather is labeled as being a leading primary contributing factor of accidents. 16 of those deaths occurred in Massachusetts waters, a significant increase in the average number of deaths per year between 2006 and 2010. Another 42 Bay State boaters were injured. In the event of an accident in Hingham Waters, the harbor master is there to help. We'll go out there for life at any particular time. If we feel someone's going to get injured or lose their life, we will be out there in a flash and get out there quickly. And this year, the harbor master is protecting life with a stunning piece of new equipment obtained through a government grant. It's a 31-foot safe boat. Uh, the monies for that boat were part of a grant process that we applied for as a region with Quincy. Weymouth and Hingham, the three communities collectively got together, applied for this grant uh, in 2010. We awarded the grant and the boats were delivered to us in uh, late 2011. Uh, the new boat has forward-looking infrared, uh, has the most up-to-date digital radar equipment that's available. We have side-scan sonar, we have underwater cameras now. Uh, it, we have tremendous resources available to us that we didn't have before. 
Uh, we have uh, night vision goggles that we keep on the boat. And so even with the new tools that the town has to offer ahead of this boating season, it's important that mariners still hold the ultimate responsibility for their weather safety out on the water. Reporting in Hingham for HCAM, I'm HinghamWeather.com meteorologist Michael Page.